Hi guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. On today's video, I wanna share with you guys a few tips and tricks to make your homeschooling life just a little bit easier. Stay tuned. Okay, so one of my first tips is gonna to have to go into workbooks. When dealing with workbooks, I don't know if you guys have found that certain workbooks, because of the stapling in the pages or just a simple glue in the pages, is really hard for your kids to really get in there and work. I know that my five-year-old has been currently complaining about his handwriting without tears and how his is stapled just a little too, it makes it too bubbly on the corner here. So when it comes to his writing, it becomes a little tedious for him and he gets a little frustrated when it comes to writing inside um, closest to the stapled areas. This is gonna be a book that I'm actually gonna probably take and go ahead and combine for him um, here probably in the next couple of uh, days. But I wanna show you guys what difference it makes. So I have two examples here. And if you guys don't own a comb binding machine or spiral binding machine, most office supply stores do it for about $3, guys. Um, before I got my own comb binding machine, I got uh, my eldest son's math books. I got them all spiral bound because I realized that when it came to the inner corner, it made it really hard for him to write um, with some of the problems. So after I comb bound it, we could actually flip the page and it's so much easier for him with his little hand to fit in and really do, um, especially like on something like this. If this book was still bound by the glue, it would have been really hard for him to really get in here and write. Um, so now with that it's spiral bound, it makes it so much simpler. With the comb binding, you can flip that. you can't really flip the pages all the way around. I mean, you can, but there's still a little bit of a bubble here, but it still makes it so much easier because when you have the book opened up completely, it lays a lot flatter. So it makes it so much easier for your child to really write in it or draw in it. And I'll give you guys an example with the girls, the books that I have for the girls that I nanny. And I noticed it even today. Um, the younger out of the two girls, she was having a hard time with this big curriculum book how thick it is to get in here and really um, write. Um, I, I mean, we really had to just kind of push the book down. So I'm gonna end up doing what I did to the eldest one. With her book, her book was falling apart. I did buy these books um, used through Amazon. So her book was actually falling apart. So I ended up putting it in a three ring binder. I ended up adding dividers for every subject. So she has her reading, her spelling in here. She has her math and then she has her language arts and then her writing. And I noticed that even with her working out of this book, it's just so much easier. With her writing in this book, it just makes it so much easier because again, if the book is completely open, it lays a lot flatter so it's easier for her to um, read and write in the book. So this is gonna be actually something that I do to the younger one's book as well. Again, it's not super expensive. Most office supply stores do do it for about $3. Um, obviously, if the book is a little thicker, like if you were to take this into the office supply store, they probably wouldn't be able to cut this open. What I would probably recommend is you ahead of time pulling out subject per subject and then maybe comb binding or spiral binding each subject individually. Um, I know that I think if it exceeds usually 200 pages, most office supply stores won't um, go ahead and with the job they won't do it for you um, but like I said if it's something that you can just tear up on your own and then take it into the office supply store again and then just get each section spiral bound that might make it just a little bit easier for them um, so that's one of the first tips that I have one of the other things is with these little pesky little printables especially if it's something that you don't want to keep printing out for your child obviously we have the little um, page protectors that we tend to use a lot but one of the things that i didn't do with my two eldest but i'm definitely doing with my daughter now is even with coloring pages um what i ended up doing is i ended up buying her the crayola dry erase crayons and it has made it so much easier because i'm not finding coloring pages for her pretty much every week um especially for something like this where we're doing the color of the week 
or the color of the month. I don't want to have to print out a page for every day out of for the whole entire month. That would be like 30 coloring pages. And I just feel like we can just reuse the little coloring pages that I made her. So with this one, I mean, with the color, I don't know if you guys have ever used the Crayola dry erase crayons. They work almost just like regular crayons on the dry erase. They actually work really, really well. Um, and the erase... The erasing factor is actually pretty simple. At first, I was kind of afraid that it wouldn't wipe off completely, but it actually does. It comes with a little black towel, and it's not even a towel. It's, um, I don't even know what kind of material. It feels like a thicker silk almost, and um, it dries perfectly, and she actually even just enjoys erasing this, and of course, this is washable. So for coloring pages, um, I do recommend just throwing them inside a little page protector and investing in a few little packs of the dry erase crayons. Um, I do feel like they're a little pricier than regular crayons. They're about $5 for the pack, but they're definitely worth it. So that's another little tip that I have, just reusing um, your coloring pages with the Crayola dry erase crayons. So before I go into the actual crayons, I also, when you have multi, another tip that I have is if you guys are dealing with multiple children, I do recommend color coordinating only because unless you're doing like a community type of crayon box or markers, but if you do have different ch children and they each have their own specific supplies, I do recommend color coordinating. It makes it simpler. You don't have the, you know, the fighting, this is mine or that's yours or, you know, they, they know what belongs to who. So that was another tip, color coordinating if you can. Um, so another tip that I have for crayons is using these little um, snap-on boxes from the Dollar Tree and they usually come three in a pack for a dollar. They fit the 24 set of crayons. It fits them perfectly. Um, so this is something that I really do enjoy that each boy um, and Evelyn does have another one with the bigger crayons in her little um, school supplies. I feel like it's just easier. You're not worried about the cardboard ripping up and falling apart because all those crayon boxes usually tend to fall apart anyways. So this just makes it simpler. Another thing that I've done because I noticed that the kids like to spread out the crayons to really see what colors they're wanting to use is I had these Melissa and Doug little boxes from some of the puzzles and they're like wooden wooden boxes and this one was just plain wood but i went ahead and painted it green with just regular acrylic paint and now what the boys do when they're really having to use their crayons quite a bit for each day is they just kind of dump out their own crayons on their tray and spread them around like that they can really see the colors and they're not digging around inside this little box and they do know that at the end of the day they do have to go ahead and put them back inside of their little crayon box and seal it up so that's another little tip just because like i said some kids like to spread the crayons out to find and this just kind of keeps them contained so that's another little tip that i have another little tip is along with these i do have a community bin this is where all the broken up crayons um lost crayons just go um, and we could either use them for other art projects or for simple coloring um, whenever I do have my girls come, the ones that I nanny. This is something that I set out on the big black table that I have. And it's just a little community bin with all the crayons. Um, and it just makes it easier. Um, so like that, they're not using these crayons when we're doing a big project. They can go ahead and use these. And when they break crayons, they, they have a home. They know where to go. So this is our little community crayon box. All right, so another tip. If you guys can head over to the Dollar Tree and buy these little placemats for activities, I would definitely recommend them, especially if you have little, little ones. Um, I have noticed that we tend to get glue and markers and dauber ink pretty much everywhere on these white tables. And this has really made it so much simpler. And just as an FYI, the way that I wash these is I try to, about once a week, I take them into the bathtub and really give them a good little scrubbing with a little bit of baby soap. Um, and it just takes everything off. But I definitely recommend these, especially if you're trying to maintain your tables somewhat clean. Okay, a few other little tips. So one of the other things that I um, actually came across Pinterest, and it actually is a wonderful little tip. Um, these little face cleansers from the Dollar Tree, they come, I believe, three in a pack. And they make wonderful little dry erase erasers for anything 
dry erase. Um, it makes it so much simpler. It's made out of a uh, fleece, or not fleece, like a terry cloth material. And it just makes it so much easier. And it's something that they can just keep in their little um, stations whenever they're using the dry erase markers. Um, another little tip is for anybody that owns any chalkboards or uses chalkboards in their classroom, you guys can, you guys probably are aware how expensive chalkboard erasers can be. If you buy like, I've, I've gone on Amazon and tried to buy some and the cheapest I found was $5 for an eraser and I just thought it was crazy. But I discovered by a fluke that the big car washing sponge actually makes a wonderful chalkboard eraser. Um, especially if you're doing the handwriting without tears um, and you need just a small little eraser for it. It erases perfectly, guys. So that is definitely another tip that I have. I do have a bigger chalkboard in my class and I just kind of cut them in little pieces. So this is the one that I actually currently use on my big chalkboard. Another tip, if you guys are doing handwriting without tears, don't fall for the six or seven dollar chalkboard that they sell. I purchased this one at Home Depot for $1.98 so it makes it so much it's so much cheaper and it's made out of wood just how the hand, handwriting without tears would and it's actually double-sided so that's another little tip um, if you guys shop through Amazon when it comes to buying any kind of other supplies always check the Amazon basics first so that's another little tip I have gotten a lot of questions as to how I could afford to print out so many worksheets and a bunch of things like that um, Amazon again, buying the generic ink for your printer. I know some people are scared to buy generic ink. Um, I know that I read a bunch of reviews on some of the generic ink. A lot of people mentioned how some of them would leak or what I would just, I mean, the, I've never had it happen to me and I've been using the generic ink for almost a year now. Um, I haven't ha ever had that happen to me. I would just say treat it gently um when even tearing off i don't know if all inks have that but you have to tear off the little uh pull tab do it very gently when you insert it insert it gently i like i said i've never had any of the generic inks pop on me and you do get them for a fraction of the fraction fraction of the price guys i had somebody ask me about my sponge glues my sponge glues are probably one of my favorite things that we use in our classroom and I'm actually gonna make one, I was gonna make one for Evelyn, so I decided to go ahead and record this video and show you guys the process of making the sponge glues. Okay, Okay. so the main purpose of the sponge glues are, or the glue sponges, whatever you wanna call them, is to make it easier to glue. I feel like as homeschoolers or teachers or whatever it is, we tend to go through glue and glue sticks at such a rapid speed that is just, it's just crazy. This is actually something that I came across on Pinterest last year. And at the beginning of the school year, I went ahead and did it for the boys. And these are the same sponges with the same glue from that beginning of the school year. I have added a little bit more glue. I want to say, um, not even at the beginning of the school year, I forgot when it was, but I added just a little bit more glue, but I'll show you guys how to use them. Basically all it is, is a regular sponge that you would use to wash your dishes. And all you really have to do is pour glue on it. Eventually, what will happen to that glue, it'll just seep through into the sponge. And as long as you keep it in a pretty sealed Tupperware, it'll stay nice and moist. Um, and this is basically what it will look like once the sponge seeps to the bottom. You can see some of the glue down at the bottom. And it makes it so much simpler. So with something like this, all the child would have to do is get their piece of paper that they're trying to glue press it down into the sponge, you get plenty of glue on your paper and then you can go ahead and glue it down. It makes it so much easier. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys real quick the process in making these little sponge glues or glue sponges or whatever, whatever they are. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make one for Evelyn real quick. So I got myself one of the little snapware and these are, um, these are, the snapware are definitely a little bit more expensive than regular Tupperware, but I like them because they have a little rubber piece that creates a nice little tight seal. Um, and they snap so it makes it super easy to open for little hands. So that's what I tend to use. So I don't have any more of these type of sponges, but I do have a regular dishwashing um, sponge with the green thing. I don't want this green thing on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Okay. So I went ahead and took this little piece off. I don't need this little hard piece. 
Um, in the process, my sponge did rip in half, but it's okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it into the little um, Tupperware piece and pour the glue in. And for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the glue. One of the things I do recommend is moistening the sponge a little bit. Um, and this is gonna be something that you do wanna do every so often on these. When you start to feel them kind of dry, you can just kind of spray them down a little bit. Or another thing you can do is maybe about once a month, turn the sponge around to the other side. Um, it just keeps it nice and fresh. But um, yeah, but usually just spraying a little bit of water on the sponge tends to freshen up the glue a little bit. So once you have that nice and moist, you wanna go ahead and just start dumping the glue in. And I usually dump a whole bottle of glue in and it'll soak right into the sponge. So I'm gonna let this sit for maybe a day. And like I said, after that day is over, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. All that glue should have, have soaked up into the sponge and then it's ready to use. So this is Evelyn's new little glue sponge. This is probably one of my last tips. Since I'm in the topic of construction paper, one of my tips that I have is saving scraps. Any little scrap that we use that we cut up or have just cutouts of that we are not using, I don't throw them away. I save them because this is perfect for other little art projects. My kids tend to love doing collage art. So all these little pieces that I have saved, and a lot of times with these bigger pieces, I do tend to just cut them into smaller pieces. Um, Cause this makes for a lot of really cool little arts, um, art projects. So I tend to save every little piece. We had an art project at the beginning of the school year with the, the book Elmer, and we had to create Elmer the elephant. And if you guys are familiar with that book, he's made of different, a pa like almost like patchwork of colors. And this came in handy cause I didn't have to cut any paper. It was already cut up for me. And I just set it up for the kids to, to work with. Um, I also save the construction paper where I cut certain things out of that are still left large. I save these as well. For any other art projects, um, we might have an art project where we just need maybe a triangle of blue. So there I know that I don't have to get a big piece of construction paper and waste it. I already have a piece that I've already cut out of. So I do tend to save um, all of my construction paper, pretty much from the largest scrap to the tiniest. I save all my construction paper. And when it comes to the smaller pieces of construction paper, I just have this big uh, Tupperware that I just kind of seal it up and keep it inside my little craft area. And it's just ready to go for any little um, little arts and crafts. Well, that's it guys. Those are all my little tips and tricks. Please let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that I showed you today. And we'll talk to you later.